Hi guys, so um, Keely just did a video about how to get you through your biology IA and considering that I'm also doing biology, there's not going to be another science IA that we can help you with. I'm pretty sure you could maybe apply that to other subjects, although I'm not sure, so don't don't quote me on that. Um, so I, because of that, I decided to do a maths IA help, but this only applies to math studies because I have honestly no clue about any other math subjects in the IB. Okay, so I'm just going to talk you through a little bit about like the different stages you should have in your IA. Obviously this isn't like a bible of how to do your IA and you should definitely ask your teacher if you're stuck but this might just help you get a first draft so you can hand it in and then they can change everything and then you can get it back. <laughs> Let's do this. So the first thing you need is your title. Then you need to have a little bit underneath your title, kind of like an introduction, but it explains what you're looking into, why you're looking into it, and state your question, or questions, if you have to. I have to. My math teacher said it was okay. I don't know if it's okay. I haven't, it hasn't been graded yet. Um. <laughs> the mini introduction should be in future tense, because you're writing it as if you haven't done the research yet, although you probably won't do this bit first, even though that's what you're supposed to do. You've probably done most of the other stuff first, which is coming next. So after your task introduction, you should be doing hypotheses. Your hypotheses, you can have as many as you want, as long as they're numbered, so you can refer back to them. I think I have about three. You don't need three. I think you can get away with just one, but you should have as many as possible because it gives you more to talk about. After you have written your hypotheses down, you should really be moving into the plan. When you move into your plan, it should be in future tense, because your plan is saying what you will do, rather than what you have done, even though you may have already done it by the time you come to write your plan. Plan must mention how you collected data, so for example, if you collected it first hand and you went out and did your own research, then it should say that. If you got data from websites, however, like I did, you should say which websites you used, why you used them. Definitely cite your websites, that's a big no-no if you don't cite them. Your plan should also include what graphs you're going to draw and why, and then you can say how many you're going to make, whatever, just explain everything you need to do. Just put everything in there, and then if your teacher thinks it's unnecessary, they can tell you to get rid of it after you hand in the first draft. Really what I would say for most of the IAs, not just maths, is that even if you think it's unnecessary, put it in there anyways, because if it's necessary, your teacher will commend you, and if it's unnecessary, your teacher will tell you to take it out. You're not going to hand it in and then never get it back, you will have it graded, I think at least once, it should definitely be coming back to you, at least once before it goes off finally. After your plan, you should have a table of all of the data that you collected. After you have this big table of data, underneath that you should have the table of results. The table of results will include things that you will need to make the graphs with, potentially, even though you're probably going to use software such as Autograph to make your graphs, just in theory, things that you would need to make the graphs. So your table of results should include the mean, standard deviation, the median, quartile 1, quartile 2, the interquartile range, maybe even the R value, or even y equals ax plus b. Put in the values for a and b. Just add everything you think you can add, and then, like I said before, if your teacher thinks it is unnecessary, your teacher can get rid of it. Moving on. In the next section, you should have your maths process. And this section is pretty much just proving a graph that you have, even though the graph's coming next. So you'll choose a graph that you've already made before, with your software and it will have a nice correlation or whatever you're proving. You will take the data and you'll prove a whole list of things, all your workings out, and then just proving this one graph, that's all the real maths element that you actually need. After your maths process, you can finally add your graphs in. You should number each of your graphs and underneath your graph you should write about them. So for example, for your scatter graphs you should write about the correlation, you should write about y equals ax plus b, you can talk about the gradient, just, and talk about what the graph shows as a whole. For any box and whisker graphs or box plots that you have, you can talk about um, medians and comparing ranges between them. You can talk about maximum and minimums, and you can talk about any outliers that you seem to have. For any normal distribution graphs that you should have, you should be talking about the mean and the standard deviation and comparing the spread of data. After your graph section, you should have a section titled validity. 
Now in this section you're going to be talking about whether you believe that your collection of data was reliable, you can talk about the websites that you got it from or your method of how you collected it, you can talk about how you sampled, was it random sampling, was it some other type of sampling, I know I personally did random because you can talk about how it ensures there's no bias, you can talk about the accuracy of your data, if there seem to be any discrepancies in the data, whether you have outliers, whether you think your outliers are necessary to your investigation. So for example for me I was looking at population and I was looking at um, GDP and I was looking at Olympic medals and I had a couple of outliers but considering those outliers were China, USA and Russia I can't really discount them as they have a large portion of the world's population. You could also look at your samples and say whether you would change anything but that's pretty much just the validity. Talk about your data and whether it's worth anything. After the validity section you should come into your conclusion. In the conclusion you should be taking all of the data that you've gotten, all of your graphs, and you should really be talking about your hypotheses, answering the hypotheses or disproving the hypotheses. If you have more than one hypothesis you should be answering them individually within this section. You should definitely be referring to your maths part in this section. After you've completed your conclusion, all that's really left for you to do is have a bibliography at the bottom. Definitely everything cited. You can cite things however you want to cite them. I personally do um, footnotes and then have everything at the end as well. But that's basically it. Um, I would say I'm quite lucky doing the maths studies IA. I've seen some of the maths standard IA and it doesn't look very fun. It's not. It's not. So see you math studies people or maybe this is this video will help you decide whether or not you actually want to do math standard or math studies again because the coursework is quite a lot of work. Um, even the math studies coursework which is significantly easier than the math standard coursework it still takes you a while. So this is me signing off. I hope this video was helpful. Bye! Oh my god. Well you know what? I can't I need a camera. camera. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh it's warm.